Hi, Zen Cryer de Brook here again. I uh, want to share a bunch of different little things that have come together um, during my cancer journey here. I have had a few emotional moments, and one of them was uh, when I went to the doctor and they outlined the choices I have to take care of this. And I had basically, you know, two choices and then I made up a third because <laughs> that's what I do is I want to make sure that I'm, um, this is working for me, you know, and it was really hard because they explained the, the different surgeries to me. And as we were going through it, that's when it, I started to get emotional and I closed my internal guidance system shut down. I felt a, a lump in my throat and a tightness in my chest as I was sitting there and my mind had begun to run a story about what this was gonna mean for me as a woman to have to make these choices. And I remember just being there thinking, there's no good choice when you're talking about breast cancer and the options that you have, there's no good choice. So basically, I have a lump in my right breast, it's broken open, and so the concern is that it could spread to my lymph nodes. And we're, the doctors are pretty sure at this time, based on the evidence that they do have, which is limited because ultrasounds don't take the best pictures, we won't really know until we get into surgery, um, that basically it could be in my lymph nodes in the smallest amounts and then it would change the diagnosis and things would be different. Uh, once we get into surgery, that's when we would find that out. And so. I'm feeling open that it isn't in my lymph nodes and that it hasn't spread. Now, when you're working with your internal guidance system, right? I have been working with this since 1993, a long time, and and decoding it and, and uh, figuring out how this thing inside of us that we're born with works. But what I do know is, is there's no yes or no answer. So it could be that, um, that my having concerns about the spread would cause my internal guidance system not to share that with me which I know that sounds really weird, but when you begin to get a relationship with this part of yourself, this expansion and contraction that's happening um, in, our, in your center area of your body, you begin to realize that there's so much more intelligence going on than our minds can even fathom. And that this part of yourself is tuned into something bigger. And part of it is to help keep you on track and to keep stress, anxiety, frustration, irritation, guilt, worry, those kinds of things out of your experience out of life so that you are not generating that that closed down energy that's unhealthy for us you know like stress is super unhealthy it's one of the unhealthiest things that we could participate in but we don't know how to stop it and your IGS is the tool to help you stop it so I'm getting an opening that I don't have um, a spread into my lymph nodes and so what that means is my choices were that I could do a, a lumpectomy and then radiation in the area. Um, but I'm not feeling comfortable doing radiation unless I have to, or chemo unless I have to. Um, the other option is to do a mastectomy on the right breast and then try to reconstruct to make the two breasts match. And when they were telling me how to do that, I mean, we're gonna have to cut down my left nipple and I would have a type two on my right breast and There'd be a scar, a different scar on my left breast than on my right breast because they're two different procedures. And it was just this very long, sounded like three, possibly four surgeries that I was going to have to go through um, in order to do my best to avoid radiation. We'd only need radiation or chemo if it has spread. So I went home and I, this is where I got really emotional. I, I had a, a struggle with my husband, you know, because I was getting really emotional. And um, I don't know about you, but if I'm feeling really you know, out of whack emotionally, I have a tendency to just kind of blow up at things. I'm very sensitive. So I was kind of blowing up at him and a couple of things he deserved in there, but not the full, not the full brunt of my emotional experience. And I sat in my car and cried. I was just floored at what I was going to have to do to my body to protect it um, and to clean this out. It was just so um, brutal. It's a brutal, you know, surgery. It's, 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 it's right there. It's in front. It's, you know, when you look in the mirror and you're getting in the shower and there's, there's this experience that's, that's brutal, you know, just and even just thinking of the surgery itself and the night before. So here's a rule. 
<laughs> stay off the internet, okay? I'm gonna do another surgery, another uh, video on how I've figured out all the different things through my surgery and how thing, information comes to me that's right for me. But I d went down the rabbit hole of what does this surgery look like and reading people's uh, experiences and a lot of them are not good on the internet. Not everybody shares their experience like this and some of them are really not good, right? And so I got really afraid and how my husband was gonna take it and how I was gonna feel about my body. I've always loved my body. Um, and so I carried all that into the surgery uh, conversation with me when I got the, the diagnosis of all how everything was getting together. And, and so when I left, I was just distraught and closed. So what was going on is I immediately, my mind started running a story about what was gonna happen and that closed me, that created the tightness inside of me, which I knew it wasn't true. But when you pack that with the drug of emotions, and I do see emotions are like a drug. They release tons of chemicals in your body. They, don't, they can't leave right away. They're there for a, a quite a sustained amount of time. Even if you're, you're, the story changes or you get new information, there's still this amped upness that happens from the emotions and that's basically where I was. And so I was working through getting out of that closing and that emotion. Now, some people believe that your emotions are a guidance system. I personally have not found that to be true. I've worked with thousands of people on teaching them how to do this and, as a, and, and, a, and teaching them how to tap into the internal guidance system. And there's also something out there called the emotional guidance system, which I think is actually fairly um, misconstrued from what the original person had intended it to be. But I found that our emotions are programs and they, those, they, they run stories and very similar stories based on what kind of ha ha things happened in our childhood. And so we can have emotions that are just story-based or fiction that we're running. And I bet you've met people or had that experience yourself where they're like, this isn't what I'm saying. And you're like, yes, it is, you know, or whatever, right? Or anger or irritation or frustration with something. But then there's this underlying internal guidance system that's connected to something bigger. And so you, you can be what you can be thinking is not true. The story you're running is not true, and yet it's creating this emotional experience. And those emotions can be pleasant or unpleasant. You could get just as high about a new lover or, or a new possible job and, and something that's going to happen in the future, like winning the lottery, all kinds of things that get, make you feel really excited and happy, but they don't come true, and your IGS will be giving you a closing in your body. And so here I was in that moment where I was running all these stories about how uh, my husband wasn't going to be attracted to me anymore and and my life was going to be so different and I'm going to have all this ugliness in my body and all of it closed me but I was hard it was hard to get out of and so in those moments what I've learned is to just feel the experience until it runs itself out and then come back and look at it later and so a couple hours after I had run it out and and was you know feeling more solid um, I started to look at it and none of the things were true I wasn't going to have a different experience with my husband because of this and I wasn't going to be, I was open that I, everything was going to be fine. I was open that I was going to be happy with the results even though I hadn't chosen a path yet. And so what I ended up deciding overall is to go with a double mastectomy. There's a few reasons why I decided to do that. Um, one is I want to avoid, like I said, radiation or chemo. I will do it absolutely 100% if there's a need, but I think that it does a lot of damage to good healthy tissue that I need to survive and, and, and I don't want to take a chance of second cancer unless I absolutely have to. Also, it knocks out the ability for this to happen to me again in the future. Why not just go in and do one surgery, let it be clean, done by the same surgeons at the same time. And then the other last piece is I do want to do construction. I'm only 50 years old. I don't want to... Um, go the next 30 years without breasts. I like breasts. I'm a woman. They're cool. Uh, so that way the reconstruction will be from the same scarring because our scars will match. I like symmetry. And, uh, and then we would, we would just build them back up and tattoo and everything in a way where it's all uniform and, and there's less surgeries actually. There's the mastectomy and then there's the reconstruction and then of course the tattooing. And so that's what I've decided. And the miracle this is something that I'm going to talk about in the next video is that there's a flow. There's a flow that happens that you get led and you can feel it in your body to all the things you need and often before you need them. And so that night I was still kind of recovering from the emotional hangover that I'd had the day that day. And a friend of mine texted me and said, I really want to introduce you to a friend of mine who's basically gone through the exact same, got 
the exact same thing in the exact same way that you have, but last year. And so I hopped on the phone with her the next morning and she says she loves her reconstruction, that the surgery isn't as bad, to stay off the internet, um, to don't research it, just trust yourself, which is all the things I needed to hear, and that she's really happy with her choices of having a double mastectomy and all the things that has happened. And she's back on, on track and living her life and thrilled with who she is. And she also really supported me in understanding that the surgery wasn't gonna ruin the summer for me and the kids. I want to be able to give them a summer and so the recovery is not as bad as it was and as she as I was thinking and I'm gonna be fine which is exactly the guidance that I was getting the whole have been getting the whole time and I just am so grateful that when you follow flow and you are in a state of allowing is another way to put it things can get to you they can reach you you have a tendency to, to, to be guided and also be in a state vibrationally or energetically inside where there's no barrier, there's no resistance for the good things to come to you. And so all these years, these 23 years of decoding this and, and figuring out how it works, this internal guidance system piece, all the lessons I've learned are coming out in pl into play and staying strong and true throughout this journey. And it's just been miraculous. So that was when my one big thing. And I appreciate you for listening. Subscribe or share if you know somebody who needs to know that they can go through challenging things without having to go into a pit of despair and suffering. Uh, I would love to uh, share if you would share this with others. Thank you so much.